Hello, all you beautiful people of the great free state of New Hampshire. Welcome back to the Carla Garrick Show. I'm so thrilled to be back here with you. This is episode 38. And uh, today we'll be talking about three things. One is I'm going to tell you a little bit about some upcoming events that are coming up. Two, the meat and potatoes of today's show is going to be why you should vote for me. Carla Garrett for House in Ward 11 here in Manchester. And, um, and then I'm going to just tell you a little bit about what I'm reading, some movies I've watched, and all of that good stuff. So for upcoming events, uh, today is Wednesday. So whenever this drops on your cable over there in your home, just know uh, Friday afternoon we'll be doing a sound, uh, a sound wave a uh, sine wave down uh, at St. Mary's Bank here on the west side. That's right by Bridge Street. And uh, it'll be for me and for Brittany LeClaire Ping. She is also running here in Ward 11. And so we're just going to get together 430 to 6, hang out, do some signs, tell folks, you know, we're here, we're running, uh, let you know about that. Of course, this weekend is the big Halloween weekend, so there are lots of Halloween parties happening. And then on Sunday, there's actually a trunk or treat event also here on the west side. You can find more information at We Heart West. This is sort of where, um, I guess, cars park and they do sort of like trick or treating, but it's in a controlled environment in a parking lot if you don't want your kids like running around, getting all crazy, doing all of that. Um, so that's coming up this weekend. If you're ever looking for events or you're just like, hey, what's cooking in the free state? Go to fsp.org forward slash calendar. That will give you a calendar of all the events for people who love liberty, which I hope you do because the opposite seems kind of crazy. If you don't like liberty and freedom, what do you like? I would say you like control and subjugation which are bad. All right, so today I want to talk seriously and less seriously, depending on how it goes, about why you should vote for me on November 8th. So, you know, I'm going to, I came up with sort of 10 things. I'll probably get lost somewhere along the line for those of you who kind of know my style at this stage. But I do want to talk a little bit about, you know, why I'm running, who I am, what you can expect if I get into the state house and all of that good stuff. Some of you may or may not know there is a group of people in New Hampshire who absolutely hate me. Don't really understand it. I think I come to issues both from the left and the right. But be that as it may, here are my 10 reasons why you should vote for Carla Garrick for House. All right, so first of all, I represent the American dream. I'm an immigrant. I became a U.S. citizen in 2000. My story is actually that I was in law school in South Africa, where I'm originally from, and I won a green card in the lottery. And at the time, I was like, wow, what an opportunity. Who gets a chance to go to America? America, you know, it's a land of immigrants. That's how we are. And I think, you know, we've just, as a country, sort of gotten caught up in this, like, really nasty messaging, and we've sort of lost sight of what makes this the best country on earth. What makes it the best country is American exceptionalism. It is because we are a nation of immigrants and people who come here for better stuff. And, um, and property rights, all the good stuff that actually make prosperous communities and a prosperous country. I love America, but I love New Hampshire even more. So my story was that I moved here, literally, I was 24 years old, I had two suitcases, brand new husband, we settled in San Francisco in the Tenderloin, which was an inner city slum, we had a bathtub in our kitchen, there was a dead junkie on the floor downstairs, there was a crack house in the basement, there was a sting, it's a pretty exciting, awesome story. If you want to read more about it, there are several essays in my book, 
The Ecstatic Pessimist, which you can find on Amazon. So you can also go to episode one of the Carla Garrick Show right here on Odyssey or YouTube. Find that episode and I delve into a little bit more about sort of my coming to America story, how I figured out I have to figure out a new way to say my name because no one can say Gerike. So hence the Garrick, which was what the first INS guy said to me at the airport that day. Um, so my point is, I chose New Hampshire as my home, and I think that's really important. You want someone who really loves it and doesn't take it for granted and is willing to really fight for our live free or die principles. So number one, I represent the American dream and I wanna make life better for all of us. Number two, why you should vote for me on November 8th. Um, I have mad, mad skills. Now, it's actually been really hard for me in life to like figure out how to brag without uh, either shutting down or just having a, I don't know, you know, I was raised in a fairly like prudent, uh, conservative home, uh, boarding school, you know, we were just taught you're not supposed to really talk about how awesome you are. So this is hard for me, but I'm embracing it because I want to get into the state house and go do good stuff for you. So my mad skills are, I have a very strong left brain, right brain. What does that mean? It means I'm both artistic, hence the masters in fine arts that I have from the City College of New York here in America. And then also I'm very rational and very logical, hence my legal brain. Um, I did my law degree in South Africa at the University of Pretoria. Uh, and then when we immigrated to America in Silicon Valley, I had to retake the California bar exam. At the time, the California bar exam was the hardest in the country. Um, I passed on my first try for a legal system that I really had to come up to speed with fairly fast. So I have a law degree. I have a writing degree, a master's in arts, and I think those two things are very complementary. You want someone who is well-rounded, who actually can look at things, like I can look at a budget and understand it, I can look at a law and actually write it, I can also sort of be accessible and you know reach people, relate to people, connect with people. So when we came to America, uh, we settled in Silicon Valley, as I said, my husband, who's an engineer, uh, you know, he was in the tech sector. I worked uh, for various companies. I actually started at Apple Computer as a consultant, uh, as a paralegal when I was taking the bar exam. And then, uh, you know, my boss there liked me so much that he actually recruited me to Borland. I went to work at Borland. Uh, that was a fairly short stint because I passed the bar exam on the first try and they didn't actually have a position for me. So from there, I went to Logitech. We all know Logitech. It's your mouse. It's your computer. It's your camera and your uh, laptop, all of that stuff. So very successful company, Swiss-owned company, worked as in-house counsel there for very many years, did some deals, uh, did a lot of IP work, again, subtly trying to let you know at uh, smarts and um and then from logitech actually sadly in retrospect i went to a company called science corporation primarily for two reasons one was i really wanted to work in san francisco in the city itself and i did i worked in a high rise where you know like when the wind blew too much the building would roll a little because of uh their air, uh, earthquake preparedness um so I wanted to, you know, live and work in San Francisco, which at the time, you know, was a pretty cool, awesome city. So I went to a company called Scient Corporation, and uh, and unfortunately, they were at the cusp of the boom and the bust. And then when everything went bust, I actually ended up having to lay off over a thousand people, including myself, which sort of brought me to. Number three, I understand economics, like in a way where it's like it actually really matters. Like, 
most of these government people are just, I don't know what they're doing, but I don't think they fully understand the big picture. So um, I had actually, when we were in San Francisco, I started programs at Berkeley because I was going to do my mass MBA. So I'm a master's in business administration, uh, ended up at in the end, doing the MFA instead, but uh, but was taking the classes. I've always had an aptitude for that. I'm really great on graphs. I understand information again. And so as we move into this difficult economic time, which people like me have been predicting is about to happen because we have printed way too much money. The economy is entirely out of balance. Anyone who watches this show a lot knows I can talk about inflation. I can talk about what these economic pressures are. And here in New Hampshire, of course, we can't control what the Federal Reserve is going to do in terms of money printing, but we can control our budget. We have cut the New Hampshire budget in the past over the years. There's a large rainy day fund. That money should probably go back as we start to grapple with things like school choice, creating micro schools, all of that. I would really like to see the tax burden reduced even farther on granite staters. But, you know, I will always always, always uh, stand against an income tax in this state. I will always stand to keep New Hampshire sales tax free. I would have supported the uh, removal of the interest and dividends tax, which will be tapering down to zero in 2026. The more money I leave, your legislators leave in your pocket, the better decisions you can make for your life, your family, your dreams, what you want. Instead of this sort of top-down thing, I think we should empower everyone to take what's yours that you worked for and do with it what you want. So number three, I understand economics. Number four. Look around my office, guys. Look, 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 look. This is my uh, studio, of course, but it is also sort of a uh, representation of my own track record. So you can find, I mean, go Google me. Uh, you know, I've been talking to the BBC. You know, I've talked to mainstream media for the past 10 years about issues relating to New Hampshire, freedom, liberty, the Free State Project, all of that. But my track record generally speaks for itself. People have said to me in the past, Carla, show your work. So a few years ago, I actually dialed up a website, carlagarrick.com. There's a lot of content there. There's content from over the years. But as you can see, you know, when I ran for Senate in 2016 as an entire unknown, um, you know, I had 12 letters in the union leader of people saying, hey, we should support this candidate. This lady is pretty awesome. So, um, so please do go do your own research, do go look. But again, I do think that my track record over the years speaks for itself. Speaking of that track record for number five of why you should vote for Carla Garrett for House in Manchester Ward 11, so if you're voting at Gosler, vote for me, is that I am your open government proponent. So a lot of the activism that I've done over the years relates to our right to know what our government is up to. If they're going to take our money, we should be able to know how they're spending it, what they're doing, who's being fishy, who's being shady, or who's being exceptional. It goes both ways. Accountability comes from transparency. I serve and have for many years on the nonpartisan board of Right to Know New Hampshire. I have testified on bills up at the state house. Um, I have helped write laws and write legislation that has come to fruition. Uh, one of the things we worked on in the past was the ombudsman bill. The governor is supposed to appoint an ombudsman. This is supposed to help you and me get access to the records we might need so that we can make sure that government is serving us and not that we are serving our government. So if I get elected, I think one of my missions and something I want to do, and maybe this is a pact 
between you and I is I want to be the most uh, transparent legislator ever. I'm down to wear a GoPro or maybe we can get one of the police uh, cams that they like to wear. Um, and I would like to just stream whatever is happening up there. If for some reason people are like, you can't really do that, there are several other things I would like to do to increase your transparency of what is happening up at the state house. One is um, I will record all my votes. I think I'm gonna work with people and see if we can create an app that people can voluntarily use. So if you don't wanna do it, you don't have to do it. That is how freedom works. But where people would record what their votes are on votes and we just tabulate it somewhere where people can go and you can just look it up and be like, oh, I like how she voted on this. I don't like how this dude voted on that, whatever the case may be. But I think that we should be recording our votes. I want to show you how the sausage is made, as they say. And, um, and I will probably start to do shows and little interviews and just content from the state house because sadly, one of the things that happened when the media sort of took a dive and newspapers are sort of a thing of the past and there are very few staff reporters. I believe at one stage, you know, there were probably eight to 10 political correspondents who would regularly cover the state house. That is no longer the case. So it behooves us, you and I, to work together to make sure that Granite Staters still know what's going on. So that would be another reason to vote for me. I will be transparent. I will try and keep you in the loop. I will make sure you know what is cooking up at the state house. So that is number five. I stand for open and transparent government. Number six, some people call me fearless. That's actually not true. Um, I think I'm, I'm inherently brave in some ways, and I think that actually comes from my upbringing. So, you know, my dad was a diplomat for the apartheid regime, right? So um, in South Africa, the history is complex, and I'm not going to give you a whole lesson about it. But basically, um, my, my forefathers were farmers. They kind of left Europe and went to Africa because they wanted to get away from religious persecution. There, they got there. Farmers traded, no slavery, all good, and then the English showed up as the story often goes, right? So, um, so my great-grandmother had a farm. The farm was called Perseverance. In Afrikaans, the word is full um, which actually almost directly translates to full of hardship, I guess. Uh, but the flip side being that we must persevere. And I think it was just always instilled in me the sense of you can't quit. If you believe in things, you should fight for what you believe in and you should do your damnedest to get what you want out of life. And what I want out of life for all of us here in the Granite State is truly a life where we are peaceful and prosperous and things are going well because we're all taking care of each other, a little less of this pitting against each other and a little bit more of of um, of leaning into what makes us all exceptional and great. So um, I am mindful that people are like, oh, you'll just go get it. And that's true, but I want you to understand that it comes from this sort of background um, of my family history. And again, because my dad was a diplomat um, during a time where South Africa was very rightfully unpopular, right? Like apartheid was a stupid system. Uh, you know, it discriminated against people on, based on their race. And interestingly, like we're almost seeing the reverse of that currently happening in America. But that's a discussion for another day with CRT and all of that. But because of that sort of upbringing where, you know, we would be in foreign countries and, and uh, I mean, candidly, I was in Sweden once in Stockholm and some cashier at a store asked me where I was from because we were speaking Afrikaans. And uh, the, the, I told her, oh, I'm from South Africa. And she said, but you're white. And I was like, yeah, there are white people in South Africa. And then she spat in my face because apparently just being white and being from Africa somehow made me a racist. So big secret, 
It's not true, uh, but it did give me that sense of you can't mind what other people have to say. You have to know what your true north is and kind of fight for the things you believe in. So um, number six, I am not fearless because being fearless is stupid, <laughs> but I am uh, brave and I will persevere. Number seven of why you should vote for me is I am here to represent all granite staters. You know, I think we're so caught up in this paradigm of left versus right, Republican versus Democrat, and just this like tension, and it's nasty, and I don't like it. I think that we can do better. And the way we can do better is by electing statesmen, actually people who have values and a sense of self and all of the stuff I've already talked about, but also who just have a sense of 603 pride um, where, you know, we, we, uh, where we just, we move beyond this sort of noise to, actually being like healing. I think I think maybe we're all ready politically for some healing, a little less of this, a little less anger and all of that, and a little more uh, love. And I'll lean into that towards the end. So I'm here to represent all Granite Staters, whether you're left or right, give me a shot, just give me a shot. So that's number seven. Number eight is I will make politics exciting and I will at least bring some laughs. I mean, I'm at least coming to you stroke free. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to bring some fashion. I'm going to bring some jokes. I'm really going to try and just liven things up. Why can't we enjoy life even when we are trying to figure out hard problems? So with me at the State House, Politics in New Hampshire will be 100% more exciting. All right, number nine, and then we got number 10, and then I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some stuff, uh, movies and stuff I've been watching. So number nine is simple. I love New Hampshire. So I have traveled all over the world. I lived on four continents. I've been to like 40 countries. I have been kidnapped. I have been punched in the face in Thailand. I have been robbed. I've had my passport stolen. I've had a pretty exciting life, frankly. But I chose New Hampshire as my forever home. So, you know, I talk to the media a lot for, for all the things I do. And I love to say this because I truly believe it. You know, um, geography is in destiny. We all should and do have the freedom to choose where we want to go. Some people want to seize that. Some people don't. Some of you were just really lucky to get born in New Hampshire. And some of us, as you've heard me say in the past, have to be smart enough to move here, to move to a state whose slogan is live free or die. It's like we can't forget that freedom and liberty are really, really important and that all human things flow from that, right? Like if you're not free to be yourself, to speak your mind, to own who you are, then who owns you, first of all? And second of all, like that's not a life, in my opinion, that's worth living. So I, you know, I love New Hampshire. I love everything about it. Uh, I maybe <laughs> I love the nature. I love the na uh, the lakes. I love the beaches, you know, like we're a perfect little country. And, you know, I talk about that. And of course, people do know that I am pro independence or getting as much of the federal government off our backs as possible. But again, that's only something that can happen if we're all on board with it. I believe in consent. So like, you know, don't panic. So I love New Hampshire, everything about it, and I want to keep New Hampshire awesome. Here uh, behind me over there is a union leader opinion from I believe it was 2015 that literally says, if free staters can help it, they'll keep New Hampshire awesome. I made a bumper sticker that says, keep New Hampshire awesome. And what do I mean by that? I mean, let's fight for the things that we know make the state the number one freest state 
in America, the number one or two most prosperous states. We have low taxes. We have this big legislature where we go and then we have to grapple with things. And because there are a lot of people, it means, you know, you actually have to work to get consensus, to get buy-in. And that's where my skills will come handy as, you know, as someone who is trained in the diplomatic arts. So I... As number 10, want to say the following. Give me a chance. So I think I'm pretty awesome. I have a lot of fantastic skills. I have worked really, really hard at improving myself. And maybe we could sit there for a moment and talk about that. Uh, back in 2016, I was drinking way too much alcohol. I was kind of unhappy. I was very stressed. I didn't really like how I felt, uh, my health was bad, I'd had a negative reaction to a forced vaccine back in 2008, different conversation, but be it as it may, my body was inflamed, I was drinking to try and alleviate that, I was vastly overweight, I was just miserable and unhappy. So what do you do? You can either sit in that and become a, uh, a, a, uh, subjected to victimhood, right? Like, oh, woe is me, 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 me. Or you can change, you can change your life. And I've always been growth mindset oriented. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna change my life. My husband and I made some decisions. We looked at our diet, we looked at our life choices, we looked at the things we were spending our time on, and we decided to change. I lost over 50 pounds, I quit drinking alcohol, I reintroduced exercise into my life, I, you know, I love to go hiking now, kayaking, whatever, all the great stuff about that New Hampshire actually offers, right? So I made personal changes so I can represent to you that I will do the things I say I will do. I'm willing to do hard things and to really commit to them and, uh, you know, step up and do the things that need to happen. So I want to be your next state representative in Ward 11 in Manchester. I'm actually excited to go to the state house first. Of course, if there's a special election at some stage, um, I will probably run for Senate at that stage. And that's where the old t-shirts come from. But for right now, I wanna start there. I wanna build the base. I wanna to prove to you that I can do the job, I can do it well, that I'm gonna do the 10 things I just told you about, that I'm gonna be your open, transparent, uh, responsible uh, politician, I hate that word, uh, your, your representative up at the state house, and that um, I believe my policies, my life philosophy, the way I approach things uh, will lead to more peace and prosperity in the state of New Hampshire. The more money we can leave in your pockets, the better off we're all going to be. And I honestly, I come with love. I want to share the love with everyone. I don't think we should be on this track of trying to control people, telling you what to do. Look, if you want advice, I have opinions. Should they be laws? Absolutely not. We need to keep our freedoms as free humans so that each of us can be exceptional on our own, with our own jam, for our own lives. So I want you, please, to, uh, I want to earn your vote. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out. You can reach me at carlagarrick.com. You can email me at carla at carlagarrick.com. You can call me 865-7140. Keep it light and nice. I don't like the nasty voicemails. Um, but please, honestly, Give me a chance. I think I will blow you guys away. I want to keep New Hampshire awesome. And I believe that if you vote me in on November 8th, together we can live free or die. But better yet, we can live free and thrive.